In lesson 4.7, we learned how to use unit rates. Our essential question is, how can you solve problems using unit rates? And this is found on page 179 of your big book. The Champy family is traveling from Arizona to Texas. On the first part of the trip, they drove 500 miles in 10 hours. If they continue driving at the same rate, how many hours will it take them to drive 750 miles. You can use equivalent ratios to find the number of hours it will take the Champy family to drive 750 miles. You may need to find a unit rate before you can write equivalent ratios. So we're going to apply our concept of unit rates to a real live situation. Find equivalent ratios by using a unit rate what ratio, uh, right ratios that compare miles to hours. So this is something we use all the time. So um, even when you're just driving down the road, your mom or dad is watching the speedometer and they know that they're driving 50 miles per every hour. So that would be a unit rate. 50 miles per hour would be a unit rate. So here we have 500 miles, that's where the 500 came from, in 10 hours. So first, so and we want to find out, but they have 750 miles to go. So we want to find out how, um, how many hours that's going to be. So first we've got to get this number down to a unit rate. So for a little while, we are going to ignore this side because we want to take care of the unit rate part first. So, so I'm just going to cover this side up for a minute while I simplify this to a unit rate. So to get a unit rate, you divide the denominator by itself because that will always give us a 1. But whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top because we need a form of 1. So 500 um, over 10 divided by 10 over 10 gives us, all that does, uh, dividing by 10 just knocks off a 0, gives us 50 over 1. So they are driving at 50 miles per hour. Now, now is when we bring back this part and we need to figure out what do we need to multiply by 50 to get 750. Well, okay, I'm going to go over here and do a little margin work. 750 divided by 50. Well, 50 can go into 75 one time. Then I subtract, I end up with 25, bring down the 0. 50 goes into 250 five times because 5 goes into 25 five times if I just take off those zeros. All right, so I end up with um, 250. Okay, so this right here is 15. So 50 times 15 will get us 750. But whatever I do to the, to the top, I also have to do to the bottom because we have to keep a form of one always if we are making equivalent fractions. Because 15 over 15 is a form of one. Now I can go ahead and solve. So 1 times 15 is 15. So that's our answer. They can drive 7, if they stay at the same rate, they will make, um, they will drive 750 miles in 15 hours. All right, so I skipped this part in the, in the writing here. So write an equivalent rate by multiplying both the numerator 
and the denominator by the same value, which in this case is 15 over 15. Multiply 50 by 15 to get 750. So multiply the denominator by 15 also. The numerators are the same. So the denominators are equal to each other. The unknown value, the gray box, is 15. This is where the numerators are the same because we did the multiplication. 50 times 15 is 750. 1 times 15 is 15. So our unknown value is 15. So it will take the family 15 hours to drive 750 miles. All right, on the back side. Uh, we're going to do the same thing, only using a bar model this time. Kenyon earns $105 for mowing three lawns. How much would Kenyon earn for mowing 10 lawns? Draw a bar model to represent the situation. So right out of the gates, I want to take this down to a unit rate. I want to know how much he's getting for each lawn. Um, so what I'm going to do is divide 105 by 3. I end up with, what is that, 9, 15, 5. Okay, so he's getting $35 for every lawn. So do you see how getting a unit rate will tell me much faster how much money he's going to make for 10 lawns. Well, now I just take one lawn and multiply it by 10. He's going to get $350 to mow 10 lawns. So taking things down to a unit rate makes um, calculating larger numbers faster. Okay, here we go. Solve the problem. The model shows that three units represent $105. You need to find the value represented by 10 units because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lawns. All right, so first find a unit rate, which I already did. So 105 um, for three lawns divided by 3 over 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. That's all I did up here, too. This is no different. It's just a different way of writing it is all. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 105 divided by 3 is 15, because I already did the work over there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not 15. It's 35. Sorry, sorry. 35, because he gets $35 for every line. That's exactly what we just did over here. So one unit represents $35. 10 units are equal to 10 times one, right? So each one of these lawns is $35. 10 times 35 is $350. So Kenyon will earn $350 for mowing 10 lawns. All right, um, go ahead and let's take a look at our notes. Use unit rates, okay. First, make a unit rate with the complete ratio. So you have one ratio that's complete in every problem. One of them has a missing number. So here's my complete ratio. It has a 90 over 15. This one has an unknown value over 100. So the first thing I have to do is divide by the denominator to make this a unit rate. Then I multiply the unit rate by the value to make the ratio equivalent. So 
So I took this, this ratio, reduced it to a unit rate, which is 6 over 1. Now I have to multiply it. I have to multiply the 1 by um, the known value, but I also have to do that to the top, and that will give me my answer. Once the denom denominator or the numerator are the same, the answer is in the box. That's our unknown value. So the answer is 600, and that's our answer. We're going to have to practice this more in class.